Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this is the third part of my fraction mechanics and delamination series. In this video, I'll be talking about progressive damage and crack growth. We'll start by taking a look at the geometry. This will be done in a, as a 2D simulation. You can certainly run this as a 3D analysis as well. We created the geometry in space claim. Uh, we have two materials here bonded together, for example, with an adhesive. This will be the, the adhesive region. This is my initial crack. This is going to be a double cantilever test, so I have a section carved out for uh, my load and another section for support. So the way we do a progressive damage or crack growth simulation is we start by defining a material that'll be my that'll be delaminating or, or uh, cracking. So I'll call it my adhesive. In SS engineering data, we can specify different types of fraction mechanics criterion. I'm going to go with a basic linear fraction mechanics criterion where we define the critical energy release rate, energy release rate for each of the modes. Based on our test data, we can measure and simulate the critical energy release rate based on things like double cantilever, uh, in-notch bending, or three-point bending uh, testing. We can specify the energy release rate that will cause a crack to grow. I'm going to make up some num simple numbers here and demonstrate the process. Certainly, when you do a serious analysis, these values will need to come from experimental correlations. Uh, we want to ensure that S recognizes this as a 2D analysis, not a 3D simulation. And then we can go ahead and set up my crack growth simulation. So this is my model. I'm going to start by working my way down and changing the materials. This will be my EMC, a thin copper layer, defined. I'm going to get rid of the, my contacts. This will not be needed for this analysis. And I'm going to take a look at the initial mesh. Because I expect the crack to grow into the model, I'm going to assign a smaller mesh size, so maybe half of this. Um, the circle represents the mesh size, maybe let's do 0 0.1. It's a 2D analysis, so it should run fairly quickly. Okay. So now we want to set up our fracture mechanics areas. Uh, this will be a pre-mesh crack. Pre-mesh crack again requires me to specify where the crack tip is located and as well as the direction. So the crack tip is going to be a name selection. I'm going to select this point. I'm actually just going to select both nodes and create a name selection for that. Then convert this name selection to a nodal name selection. So that'll be my crack tip. Uh, next, I want to specify the coordinate system for the crack. And this actually looks okay. I want to move this to the crack tip. So let's define a new coordinate system. And we want the origin to be at the crack tip, going that way. Okay. And this is how we set up any fraction mechanics analysis. When we run the analysis now with the static loading, we will be able to calculate the energy release rate of a particular set of loading with a particular length of crack. To have the crack grow, we have three options, interface delamination, contact debonding, and smart crack growth. I'm going to be showing the smart crack growth later on, but for this particular session, I'm going to focus on interface delamination. Uh, interface delamination, you can specify an energy release rate or I can specify a material data table where we assign the, the adhesive to this particular interface. My initial crack is defined using my pre-mesh crack and the crack generation method is based on node matching. What this will do is, is that this will tie together the nodes on these two edges for me and then the crack will progressively grow from that onwards. Now we just need to set up our analysis uh, for our simulation here. We'll have a fixed support on the bottom. 
and the displacement constraint at the top. So I'm going to pull this uh, in the y direct axis by let's say half a millimeter, and we can run the simulation. And oh, the the other thing I missed was that for uh, energy release rate type of simulation, we need to ensure that we have a linear mesh. So usually we monitor the force conversions. So you can see the way that the, the crack is growing as we load this. this uh, oh, I should turn on my large deflection. This ensures that I take into account geometric nonlinearities and recalculate my stiffness matrix at each uh, iteration. That's why it ran fairly quickly. So this will be a little bit slower, but more accurate. Okay. Let's uh, slow the video down a little bit. You can see the initial crack, and then slowly the crack, crack pro progresses and, or you can think of it as the adhesive breaks and the two layers delaminate along a predefined path. We can plot the reaction force versus the displacement. So we can get a force displacement graph of the simulation by setting the x-axis to y displacement. And we mostly want the y for total force. So this is the force displacement graph. As we pull on this, you can see initially it took a lot of force. Suddenly the crack breaks, and then it takes uh, as my as I pull up on the lever, it takes less and less force because the crack grows larger and larger. And this is the type of thing you would see in a test environment as well. Often in a test environment, we want to set up a cyclic loading, so we pull it a little bit, let it push it back down, pull it, and so we should get a series of these peaks instead of just a single peak. Um, and we can do that. So right now I'm pulling it one time to five millimeters. Uh, we can repeat that process. Let's retrieve this result. So this is about 2.5 seconds. Or we can look over here. So maybe the first time we want to pull it by one millim 0 0.1 millimeter, two, three, four, etc. So we can set up a multi-step simulation. Let's do a five-step analysis. In the first step, we're going to pull the system up by 0 0.1 millimeters. We'll set it back down to 0 0.05, and then we want to do 0. 3 millimeters, put it down again, and then we want to pull it up by 5 millimeters. So we we cycle the amount of displacement to look at the, and this allows us to um, estimate the length of the crack. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens in this scenario. Initially, a crack opens up. A bit. It and then cracks more. So if we look at the force versus um, displacement plot, you can see this is my first crack, second crack, and the third one. I think the second in the second uh, session the crack did not grow. And so maybe the energy release rate just was just a little bit too high for the crack to grow second session, but then it starts to grow again. So that's a quick example of how to set up a interface delamination, adhesive debonding, or crack propagation problem in ANSYS Mechanical. I used a interface delamination option to model the progressive failure of a crack. Thank you.